on today's show, we've got the Meng uh, 124th scale F350 update, so we'll be looking how we got on with that build on Monday. Tuesday's live show, we covered a lot on there. Uh, we had a lot of deliveries in this week um, with some great product reviews. So we've got everything from fillers, primers, paints, uh, and everything else like that, plus some tools. So we'll be looking at those. The Revel HE111, absolute monster. Uh, made its way into the primer stage now, so looking really good with that one. Uh, we used the new AK Interactive primer on that one, so we'll be having a recap on that. The prize draw, uh, we got uh, last month's prize draw will be announced, and we've got the Christmas super prize draw for you. Kit reviews this week, we've got Airfix's new uh, 148 scale net. Okay, bargain, 17 pounds, beautiful little kit, so we'll be having a look at that one. Plus we got Classic Airframes Blenheim Bomber uh, in the news a little bit this week, uh, so we got the kit review of that one, uh, some lovely resin parts for that. Uh, we talked about it on the live show on Tuesday, but we're having a proper look this time at the clamp set from Trumpeter, cheap but very, very useful. Plus we got all the other news and gossip from the forum. Hello, welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory, busy week this week, uh, as you can tell. Basically, Monday, we uh, cracked on with the Ford F350. We've got the interior all done in there now. Absolutely everything sort of put together, put in and everything else. Did mention, no seat belts, seems a little bit odd. But anyway, this one is now ready for you to watch, uh, which basically gets you to this stage. And now we're ready really to start getting the, the shell and absolutely everything else painted up. So we're gonna be doing it in quite a fancy paintwork and everything else next week. I'm really pushing on with that. We could probably have that one completed next week, which would be really nice. So the next part of that is up on the site on the video bill for members to see. And as I say, quite a convert. Really are enjoying the, almost the simplicity of it. Um, you know, when you're building something like a bomber, you've got seam lines and there's all those things, but obviously there's no filler involved in this anywhere. So it is very structural as is the ve real vehicle. So chassis, things like that, and everything else really are enjoying it. So, you know, I'm definitely coming back to do more vehicles very, very soon. Tuesday, we had the live show. Um, Chaos as ever, uh, really enjoyed it. Great to have uh, Shannon Steele on the site and uh, from the site, he was on our special guest here in the studio and Hans, uh, one of the team guys, he was over from the US as well. It all went really well. We only had one small glitch from Hans disappearing for a bit. And apart from us all waiting for his cat to actually destroy his entire collection and everything else like that, it all went really, really well. Thank you so much for all your great questions. It really is appreciated. Um, you know, having the interaction of live, of actually you speaking to us, asking us questions uh, and everything else really is a little bit of fun. As I say, it's a lighthearted look at modeling because we always have plenty of laughs, uh, lots of giggles with it and everything else like that. So we really do enjoy doing it though. We hope you enjoy it as well. Um, and also it's a look at what's going on sort of live as well. So, uh, for instance, on the Tuesday morning, I had two huge deliveries came in here, um, which we spoke about actually on the live show, which I'm going to be looking at over the next few weeks. So we've got some of these, uh, the Aero Bonus uh, seated pilots in the seats and everything else. We've got the remove before flight tags. We've got the fabric seat belts, fabric uh, remove before flight tags, uh, and some bits that I'll be doing hopefully soon. So the, we were talking about the Jaguar. Uh, color photo etch set turned up. We've got the nozzle photo etch, I know. <laughs> and also because I want to do it, I'm hoping you guys are gonna vote for it. Uh, at some point is the decals for doing the Harrier build as well, for doing that kinetic new FA2 Harrier. Plus other things we had come in, we were talking about as well. I've got in a load of these AK interactive paint sets we were talking about. I will be reviewing them, and to be honest, I'm gonna be using one of them on this particular lump anyway. Okay, so we've got the Bombers set, we've got the Fighter set, we've got the REF set, and everything else like that. So we have plenty of laughs along the way with those. Uh, we also were looking at MIGS Primer. Now, Neil, one of the guys on the site, actually sent me a bottle of this, bless his heart, for me to have a play at, really just to see what I thought about it. I love this stuff now, I must admit, I absolutely love it. And as you can see, the monster that is the 32nd scale uh, Revel HE111 is absolutely huge. And I used probably almost half a bottle of it on it. It's had about three coats, um, you know, uh, and that was the thing. It's in the video build, you can see the full video build of it and everything else like that. But basically I speak about, um, we did it on the live show, we did a quick test and everything else. The two things I love about this stuff, one, it sprays directly down onto neat plastic without beading up the like, to be honest, the polyurethane, I've got one here, here it is here, that we have used in the past. So when we've been using the uh, polyurethane primers and things like that, 
Two things always were a little bit of a problem. First of all, getting that first coat on. So you had to give it a very nice misty, light, dusty coat, let it dry, and then you're absolutely fine. Second coat, as you would then come in, you could go in a little bit more heavy. Problem was, you had to leave it, I don't know, 72 hours, for, you know, to really dry properly before you could sand it, okay? And when you used to come in then with your sanding and everything else like that, sometimes it would roll up. Being polyurethane, like a latex, that was the trouble. Great capabilities of covering though. So if you had a rough texture, shall we say, on your paintwork, it would smooth it out and be absolutely beautiful. So that's why we like that stuff. So if you were in no real hurry, it was fine. So if you're gonna be doing one of these things where perhaps it's Monday, you're gonna spray it, and the next time you get to it, maybe the weekend or later on in the week, something else like that, it was never a problem. For guys like me who like to spray, and then 10 minutes later, oh, there's a blemish, I need to sand that out and go for it, it was always a real problem. And that's why I used to use things like a standard acrylic, um, paint of what I had a lot of or just a grey paint from Tamiya and spray and put that down okay but the trouble with those is they're great for giving texture to spray onto but it didn't actually fix any little faults okay this stuff must admit in testing we sprayed this down and it went on absolutely beautifully no problem at all okay and then as you can see here it gives a beautiful satin finish it's got a little bit of cap capability to covering i don't think it's quite as good as the polyurethane stuff but certainly it's almost there so perhaps if you was to give two heavy coats or two good coats of surface primer to sort of take care of imperfections sealing down photo etch is a classic example you might need three with this stuff and to be honest this has had three coats now and that's really to take care of the photo etch and make sure it's properly down and not sitting too high and proud so it's all sealed in and everything else like that so, in a nutshell, I love this stuff. So let's have a look how we got on. So, what we actually have is our surface primer in here. Now, it is a grey colour, so we shouldn't have too much problems with it, apart from the size of this thing. All right. So, all we're going to do, checking our flow, I'm just going to put down a nice light coat right the way over everywhere to start with. And then we're going to come back and we're going to add to it and make it thicker and heavier as we actually go. Now the trouble with this is stuff, it stinks to be honest, it's quite smelly. So all we're going to do is hit the extractor, get it going that way and out of the room. Okay, so we're just going to put a simple coat, one light coat over it, and then we'll come back and put the next coat, which will be a far heavier one. Okay, first coat down, looking quite good. It's drying very, very quickly, which is a good sign for us because the other one we use, which is the Vallejo, um, which is somewhere else. Um, oh, I've got one kicking around, no, it's over out of the way. That one there takes a long time to dry. This seems to be going on well. Remember, wing roots, things with 90 degrees, a nice heavy coat of paint in there, so you don't get any sort of problems with it sort of getting stickly texture and stuff like that okay so what we're going to do now is just put another coat right over the top nice thick coat for building it up so it will self level and give us a very nice texture for the rest of our painting Okay, so as you can see, we're back over here purely because I can't get the cameras to work in. There's just not enough room with something this size. Um, first time using the MIG Ammo. Um, this is the polymer surface primer, water-based. It's a bit smelly. I think if you didn't have any extractor, you're really going to know about it, to be honest, because it would, wouldn't take long to stink out a room. Let's just put it that way. 
So if you have got the family moan about your airbrushing and your smells, they're definitely gonna love this stuff. It's not a horrible smell, it's just, I don't know. It, I'll tell you what it is, I, I figured it out as I was spraying it. Um, in your childhood, when you use like poster paints, uh, you know, when you're under five years old, it smells like that stuff, that's what it actually is. That said though, I do have to say, a couple of things I like about it. One is it went straight over this with no problem whatsoever. Uh, secondly, it's laid very, very nicely. I don't know how well obviously the cameras can pick out certain areas, but certainly up the top here, you know, I know, you know, obviously we sanded and filled it and all the rest of it, but there is no evidence whatsoever. There's no seam, there's no sink mark, there's no difference in it. Um, and then also it's done a particularly nice job. We get one of the cameras, I don't know which one we're gonna use, um, but um, the photo etch is nicely absorbed into it. Sometimes it's too raised. Um, if you don't get down a good, thick coat of paint around it, it can look a little bit artificial and afterwards. This actually blends it in really well. Normally what I tend to do is put on a couple of coats of clear over it to try and blend it in. This is just the primer coat, it's gone in very, very nicely. The other thing as well is, um, probably the best side to see it on this one. You might be able to see these seam lines down here. They weren't pretty, they were usable, don't get me wrong, and I wasn't gonna go around and sand them because there's a little bit of detail in there, but they weren't that pretty, but now after putting this lot down, it's really gone in there very nicely. The other thing as well is, um, I gave it a nice big thick heavy coat as I always do between you know a 90 degree between a wing and a fuselage so you don't get that sort of dusty effect, but generally there isn't any sign of it absolutely anywhere at all, it's really nice. Now we haven't done the underside, and to be honest, this is just one coat as well on the top. So it's not like this has had multiple coats and been you know beat up it's actually one coat dusty coat down and then one proper coat over the top and literally that's it so what i'm going to do is get it back in the spray boot and spray it but obviously with the cameras in there it's pretty much of a no-no so we've moved one of the cameras and we've got this nice overall shot from the side now coming in just so we can keep this entire thing in here like this because it is a complete monster but i wanted to check in with you as i said first time i've actually used the um they're calling it polymer surface primer um, from my point of view, it gets a thumbs up. It's very nice. I haven't tried to sand it yet because I've got nothing to sand on it. Uh, but in a live show that we did last night, um, I gave it a whirl and it did sand okay as, as well. So from that point of view, if you are looking for something a little bit more user-friendly, shall we say, than perhaps the our usual favorite, which is the Surface Primer by Vallejo. This is the polyurethane one, which tends to be a little bit rubbery. The trouble you have with that one is that when you're painting it down onto neat plastic, sometimes it takes a few coats, misty light coats, to build up before you can get a proper coat in on there. Otherwise, it sort of beads up on itself. Haven't had that trouble now with the uh, the MIG Ammo one. It's gone down, it's done a fantastic job. It's a very nice finish as well. It's a little bit rough, but to be honest, that's me in there and I was just chucking it down. You know, this isn't gonna be particularly nice. It's gonna be weathered and worn. So I wanted some texture into the paintwork. But generally, just looking at the top here, this surface work we've done, the lines around here and everything else, one little area. And as you can see, it is a beautiful finish. Um, I'm, I'm sold, it's as simple as that. I will be buying a lot more of this, so thank you, Neil, I'll send you another bottle back to replace yours, because uh, it, it really is fantastic stuff. I don't know if they do it in a big one. Did they do it in a big one? I have to find out. But if they do it in a big one, it'd be handy, because they say, I've used half a bottle of this. Admittedly, I've done three lots of testing, because about, uh, seriously, and it's not an exaggeration, around about half an hour before we sort of came on air here, I sprayed this, okay? And then this is what, it was like before, okay? And as you can see, that's pretty horrible, okay? I sanded it all cool completely down and given it one good coat like that, and that's what it's done in one pass, okay? So it's no problem with that at all. Um, sanding it wise, as we know in testing, it's not a mass fan right off the bat as we sit here. Uh, if we just try and find an area where it's not gonna worry about it too much, but certainly you can come in And as I say, that's half an hour later and I can sand it, okay? I wouldn't recommend that. I would give it a couple of hours and then sand it because when we did it testing on the live show, but certainly it does sand and it is really, really nice. So definitely, you know, if you're after a new primer uh, and you want something quite hassle-free, then the new um, MIG Ammo stuff is the one to go with because it really is very nice. And I apologize if I keep getting the names wrong, but if you would stay with the same company for about three weeks, it would be nice because I can't keep up. <laughs> the other thing as well, as we speak about it, we did on the test, Buster had a big workout with this stuff, which is the true metal stuff. Um, and uh, Buster over there, he, we did the front end with it. We love this stuff. This is the AK Interactive's true metal finishes. Great stuff, best looking metal finish 
I've seen. It's better than Alclad, it's better than my bufferballs that I use up there, i.e. the Mr. Metal Color ones and the Model Masters. It's so easy to use uh, and it is great because it doesn't peel off when you tape over it and you can go over the top of it really good. Next week we're going to do a full on test and we're going to do a head to head. We're going to have all the colors on the go. We're going to get the bufferballs out, we're going to get the actual metalizers and we're going to get the Alclads and we're going to have a bit of a special show on metalizers. We're going to do a full sort of, you know, one hour on test next week so you're not going to want to miss that one. But anyway, the actual, getting back on track, the actual um, HE111 is looking really nice. Really excited now to get it into paint. As some of you will know on my Facebook, um, it doesn't fit in the spray booth very well. So what I've done is, or will be after we finish sort of filming this show, is converting this into my spray booth again. I've got my other smaller spray booths down there. I'll get them lined up here and we will spray it right here because quite frankly, there's just no room. You just can't get this thing in, you're like this trying to get it in there and it isn't just happening but anyway from my point of view I like to try new things um, and I like to give everything a sort of fair try sometimes I think it's not really replacing what I've got in a positive way it's just doing the same type of thing and that is the trouble with modeling there's so many new products that come out which are basically doing the same as what's happened before on the other hand though when you get a product like this that comes along which does exactly what you've needed it to do i.e good capabilities good coverage okay and it's water-based as well don't forget so it is a type of an acrylic the smell I, I figured it out afterwards. Um, we spoke about it in the live show. We couldn't work out quite what the smell was. It's your childhood poster paint you used to have. That's what it smells of. It's quite strong, but it's not unpleasant. It's not like, um, you know, you're spraying, um, you know, like a lacquer-based primer, something else like that, which absolutely stinks. It's not too bad at all. It smells obviously a lot more than the polyurethane. Either I'm immune to this stuff now and my nasal things have been burnt off at that particular frequency, uh, but I can't smell spraying this stuff at all. But this went down, we were all in here, especially in the live show, if you saw it, absolutely choking on the stuff because I didn't have the extractor on at that point and it was like, <coughs> like a fog. Um, but yeah, it really does work. Very, very nice stuff. So there you go. Go and get some of those. It will be really, really worth it. So there you go. That's part eight now uh, of this particular build is up on there. Part nine, we're going to be going through the paintwork. Obviously, it's going to have the splinter camo. It's the pretty standard um, scheme I'm going to do it in. But obviously, we're going to be weathering uh, it as we go in various special ways, making our right the way through it. So there we go. Part eight of that is up on the site now. The other thing as well, um, unfortunately, I haven't done anything to it because I haven't had time. Um, but my big bag of drugs or plaster as we know has arrived so yeah when this turned up I bet the postman was thinking yeah right okay but yeah this is plaster of Paris I bought a big bag of it I'm going to be playing with a few new little ideas um, that we've got for making mud with this stuff by mixing our wash with it uh, and flicking it around but obviously I'm going to do a nice little base nothing massive don't get excited perhaps with some twigs in it and various things uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting and then obviously we're going to fully weather the tank and everything else so but I want to spend to be honest get this lot out of the way a bit get it in spend a little bit of time being creative uh, and everything else like that. So that was gonna be a day for next week. I'll get that one in and we're gonna get that one all painted up, taken care of and finished off. But as I say, there's not actually a part for that, the one this week. We've had loads of good reviews in. Um, one of the ones we did on the live show, which I actually put it together, is, now this is the new Mr. Tools clamping kit. Now, at the time, I must admit, we weren't exactly over the top with it, shall we say. We thought it was just a case of, you know, okay, it's a couple of clamps. They come on sprues, okay, which obviously I haven't got them on there now, because on the live show, we did it all on live, and I put them all together. What you actually get is what you get in here. So I know we're sort of green on green, which isn't brilliant down here, but you'll get the idea. So, first of all, you've got this guy here. If we just work our way roughly through what we've got. Okay, the idea with this is um, it's good enough to hold round things. So, you know, just off the bat, you can put your pen in it, but because it clamps onto it, you can put different widths and thicknesses on and you can use it like some type of jig for holding things up and stuff like that, okay? You've got another one on here as well. If we can get this one off now, it's pointed in. So you have got multiple. So if you were doing various things, you can make up trestles and tables. You've also got... Uh, this guy here, which is like a, a roundy peg type thing, so you can literally just peg things on and, you know, you can use it as trestle tables and all stuff like that, okay? The other bits you get is one of these, which we've seen before, to be honest, where is my 
it's one of these, but a glorified version of it, okay? Because it's a, a, a funny angle, instead of it just being round, like these guys are, okay? The idea being is, is that it fits all bottle sizes because it's got that sort of way of pulling apart slightly. So the idea is you put it down and then you can literally untwist your caps. It gives a little bit more leeway on there, a bit like these guys do, okay? But instead of it having this end does, Tamiya, this one doesn't, okay? Because this end is for guns. I haven't got a bottle of it around, yes we do. <coughs> okay, because the other end does guns very well, but it doesn't do Tamiya, it doesn't fit on, whereas this end does Tamiya, and this end does guns. You can see, very straightforward, okay? The other thing as well you get is a type of bottle opener, which is, I think we were speaking about it, I've done mine somewhere. Here it is. So if you were using it on something like these, typical, but you know how these inserts get stuck on the inside, which for once this one hasn't. Yeah, it's not gonna do it now. Uh, but what actually what you get is a little lifting spatula type bit just here, and you can just slip that underneath and then prise things off the top. So you can use it as, as a sort of tool for getting off. But they are quite handy, one of those things, okay? What you also get is, and this is where we could do with a demo part that isn't gonna get wrecked. Um, so, hold on. <coughs> If you've got your little Spitfire, just like this for instance, okay, and you wanted to pinch the wings, these are little tiny edges on them, just like this you see. So actually what you can do is push them on and it will pinch the edges together holding them in. So it's like a glorified peg, okay, just like this. Okay, well, I'm scratching up the plate, and it will hold in. Where it comes into its own, though, and what's quite clever is if you've noticed, they've got these little hooks on them. So you can actually take, and to be honest, this probably won't work too well because these bands are really, really old. But you could put a rubber band round the said items and use them for banding up, sort of like this. And I know it's not brilliant on these colours of actually seeing it, but as you can see, you can use them as little straps going around there just like that, okay? So that's quite a handy little tool to have for those. The other thing as well, obviously you can use these for, in places where it doesn't hook very well. So you can use it to sort of just hook on itself if you're in a situation perhaps where you were doing a fuselage, okay? And you know, just, let's bust that, bust the wall there, it's better at this because he's on a different color. But if you want a situation like this and you just needed to hook around and perhaps you couldn't get to it for whatever reason, Actually, what you can do is you can hook one side on, where's the right side? You can hook one side on just like that, wrap it round, you can hook the other side on as well, if I can get hold of it, play all of it fiddly, there we go, to hold things in. So if you're in a situation where you can't wrap a band round right the way, so if you were doing something like the bomber and you needed to band here, instead of having to put a band right over, you can just loop it round and put one on, okay? So that makes that quite easy. Also, you get in here these little cross guys, okay? So you've got all these little crosses like this which do various things, okay? The idea with them is, um, and we've seen it before, again, if you're in a situation where you've got a seam line running down the middle, like down here. If you was to put a rubber band round, okay, your model like this, and then you put your glue on, it actually tracks down each side of it and you end up with a glue mark. So I always tell you in my video builds to get two cocktail sticks, okay, and stick one down each side of the seam line, okay? So you have a gap. So when you put your weld action glue down the middle here, it doesn't actually everywhere yeah it doesn't actually run off and go down the side okay the trouble is when you're using cocktail sticks are a little bit fiddly and all the rest of it what this enables you to do is use one of these crosses okay and put it over it just like this so you have the cross section holds it above it okay so if you were doing let me just pop this one over here ping that off if you were doing something down here uh, and in reality this is okay you can then come along and pop down one like here and then you would use another one so you can just grab another type and 
let's put one that so we've got a couple of different types here. Okay. So you've obviously got a big cross and a little type cross down in there. Okay, so when you're coming in, you pop your glue in and it's not actually gonna affect or stick to an area or anything else like that, okay? So it actually works quite well. The other thing you can do with it as well, being a type of cross shape, you can actually do the thing of holding in full on corners, okay? So like the box shows, uh, well you can see here, you've got them in for multiple types of areas. We just drop this top camera down just a little bit more. You can see using them around box objects to put them in, to go around and stick in and everything else like that. So actually coming together, they are quite handy things to have and you have got these things and they all come apart. So you can use them as various things and you can change the angles. Okay, so you could say, right, we're gonna have one like this and then we just grab. <coughs> I suppose it matters too much. Okay, so then what you can do is, again, it'd be a pain to put a rubber band right around the tail, okay? So you could be in a situation where you could say, well look, okay, we'll have one on like that, okay? Okay, so you can actually put it round. So what you've actually got then is 90 degrees of pressure down on this join, okay? So if you needed something with 90 degrees, and again, it's not anywhere that's gonna have bands in there or anything else. So it's giving good pressure because it's pulling laterally this way and downwards instead of putting pressure straight in on the joint, okay? So if you put a band around, it's gonna be pinching everywhere this way. If you was then to put another one in, just for argument's sake, on the other side, uh, if we go that way, in theory, you could spread the pressure over them all. To give you different combinations for strapping up and things like that. So again, if you had a situation where you had a, a join on the bottom and you didn't want to put glue marks on there and things like that, we can simply put these guys over the bottom bit like this. And say so it's all a little bit tricky keeping them all together, but you get the point, okay? So it's just one of those little tools, but when you see the, the different combinations, as you can see it down here, of exactly different ways you can do it. It does give you a rough idea of some very clever little ways of pinching it together, holding it together without getting glue marks in different areas and things like that, okay? Some very nice combinations just to hold it together. And it does save the thing of having to get clamps all around it and anything else, which is great as long as you've got the right type of areas and different things to bite onto. But if you can do it on something like this, it really does help out and speed up your clamping time and everything else. Okay, and you get a few other bits and pieces. You've got these crossy ones and everything else like that. The thing is, you think, okay, but it's just glorified pegs and everything else like that. Great thing with this one is with all these little tools and the bits and pieces, it's only five quid. Okay, so it's not going to bust the bank. And just for five quid, I think these little guys like these are absolutely little fantastic value for money, these little pinch ones. Because you can hook them, it's just going to save so much time, uh, so much hassle and messing around and everything else like that. So if you were to be doing something, as you said, like on the wing of the bomber, like here would be a classic example, putting two bands in, okay, you can literally say, okay, well, I'm just going to do one band like this, okay, and just have it on a wing section, okay, or you can say, right, okay, well, I've got another pinch area here, we're just going to extend that over a little bit, and then we can just flip over and we can take a little bit more. Okay, just for pinching in 
and for holding in and things like that. I think there's just a handy little way that you don't have to come directly right over and you can do better gripping and better things like that, okay? So there we go, they are literally just five pound. It is the old trumpeter cheap range. So I know it comes in your, your little thing down here is a little kit to put it together. It's very, very straightforward. As you can see, you get your little crosses and things down there. And I think for five quid, they are quite a bargain. So you go, as you say, five quid really are a bargain. I wouldn't see a problem with those. So there we go. Um, available from Creative Models uh, or anywhere you're also going to get your trumpeter stuff and bits and pieces. So kit review time. First up, we've got Airfix's new tool. Um, and apart from a small mismold, an absolute brilliant kit of the Fallen Nat T1. Okay, we've got the Airfix 148 scale Fallen Nat. This is the 148 scale, brand new release from Airfix, completely new tool and everything else like that, and completely still sealed in its box. So we'll just have a quick cut in. One and two. Okay, so as you can see, the box itself, we've got some very nice box art on the front telling you all about it. And we've got some nice type of CAD images showing what you can expect in the inside, which tend to be their new things. Kit made in India, and also things you notice, cartograph decal. So we're off to a bit of a winner here. Kit number is A05123, okay. Usual blurb on the side, you'll get the usual thing, do it that way around. Uh, actually on the ones you can do, so we've got here number four, Flying Training Squadron, 1973. A good year, I was born on that year. Uh, and then the Central Flying School uh, in Gloucestershire, 1964. Okay, so there we go, very nice. As I say, we haven't seen this kit uh, mainstream in 48 scale before. Airfix did a, uh, a version in 72nd, which we actually loved. It really wasn't a nice kit. Okay, so first off, in the instructions, Okay, a little bit of difference on the front here. I don't know where we can get all of this in. I might just have to bring this out just a little bit on this camera. Sorry about that. Okay, so as you can see, a little bit different. We get technical data, um, which seems to be a new way of doing it. If we'd like to thank the Net Display team for their assistance and their website details down the bottom. Hornby now getting the stamp on everything. Okay, so we've got our usual type of thing, as you can imagine. So dropping straight back into it, it's going to be into the cockpit area. So you're putting the actual nose wheel into the bottom of the cockpit tub, rudder pedals going in, and then a couple of bulkheads, pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, I think we've got decals for the instrument panels for the front and rear cockpits. Uh, as you can see, control sticks going in, no problem there. Uh, three piece seat. Pretty basic, so we've got the sides uh, and the main box, and then you've got the rear part going on, uh, just like so. Uh, some of the framing, I think these are the color call outs. So nice little touch to this, noticing you've got two types of seats. You've got one without harnesses on it, if you're gonna have the, the actual pilot figure in there, and then you've got another one with harnesses and everything all pre-molded in, if you've got the pilot not in there. So you have the choice of exactly which one you're gonna go in there, and it goes the same with the head box as well. So uh, depending on if you've got the pilot installed or not. Rear bulkhead, I assume, going onto one of the seats. Okay, just like so. And then up here, we've got the seats going in, be installed in there. Then we've got basically, if you're gonna be having it in uh, in-flight display, those awful stands that they give, uh, well, you don't even give anymore, you have to buy, um, you can actually open up the bottom holes for installing it in there. But anyway, air intakes going in on the side. Okay, main gear going in as well. Uh, main gear support to that one. Air intakes uh, from the insides going on, and then the cheesiest of cheese you can get, which is quite really a nice touch, but if you can probably see just down in here, what you've actually got here is a photo being put on to the actual pilot figure, who I am led to believe is actually one of the design team from Airfix for putting this together. So cheeky little nice touch, really. We do like that, it's very good. Um, anyway, the um, cockpit section actually being positioned in, the inner part of the air intakes going in, pretty straightforward. Um, it's not full length engines or anything else like that, but we weren't expecting it. So you've got the front edge, uh, front end compressor blades going on there and the rear nozzle going in. Nice touch, we've got a little electronics bay gonna go into the front end, and then you've actually got with the bonnet open, 
um, going in there like that. The other half, obviously, if you're having the in-flight display, you're gonna have to be opening up. Then you're reversing it completely for just doing the other side. Okay, two halves going together, as you'd imagine, pretty straightforward that going in there. We've got the combing going over the top of the uh, rear instrument panel uh, and the uh, forward bulkhead going in there like that. Um, no options on the flaps and slats, although you can have the ailerons positioned, I do believe, looking at it just like that. And you've got the option to put into the uh, fuel tank, which I do believe they need, otherwise they don't go anywhere. Hey, who remembers Hot Shots? I just thought they were in Hot Shots, the film. If you haven't seen it, brilliant. It's a mic take of, um, with Charlie Sheen of Top Gun. And a few other films, actually. There's loads of films in that. Uh, but yeah, they use them as the latest US Navy fighter. Um, anyway, wing section going in on the top, as you can imagine, pretty straightforward. Well, you do have flaps. So yeah, positionable flaps, which is a lovely little touch on a kit like this. So you can have the flaps deployed down or up. Uh, usual thing, reverse to the other side. I don't know why they're doing drawings for that, I just don't tell you to reverse it. Positional rudder, 90 degrees on the tail, pretty straightforward. Gear doors shut if you're an in-flight display, be quite a nice touch. This is what you have to watch out for though. The gear isn't 90 degrees down on these and something I have noticed in the past. They are actually 80 degrees, okay? So something to remember when you're putting it together. All the gear and the bits and pieces going in, which is fair enough. Then we've got these fuel tanks going in together. Again, instead of saying times two, you, they tell you twice. Really, guys? Uh, and then, obviously, those being installed. A uh, couple of uh, the pitot tube going in on the front. A um, couple of antennas. More antennas. The car bonnet going on at the front, depending on if you're having it open or closed. Adding some more gear into the upper part, which is a nice touch. And those going in and obviously not getting the light on the front. Okay, you've got the little windshield uh, for the rear cockpit going in there. And then obviously you've got the option open or closed on the cockpit, putting your lights in, the other aerials, things like that. And your all important millions of individual little markings there, which we'll have a look at. But as you said, very nice touch being in the old Raspberry Ripple. Uh, and then we've got the silver with red as well. So again, nice options on those, depending on which way you want to go with it. So, uh, where are we going to start? Let's have a look at the decals first, things with here. So, cartograph decals, and immediately, like, hallelujah, you know, it's, it's definitely one of those things. It's just a case of, I would, you know, if I had time, I'd go and get some, another set, but you can see immediately, straight off the bat, how good these are. The colours are perfect. They're not that awful dead flat, you know, finish. They are a very nice semi-gloss flat finish. And also, everything is perfectly in register. We've got no trouble, which has been, to be honest, the bugbear of Airfix for years, because the registry was always off, okay? But even on the small writing, all of this little stuff here, you can see it absolutely perfectly. No problem at all on any of these. It really is nice. Beautifully done, no problem. Even to the touch where you've got these in silver, as you can see, it's probably around about the right way. But yeah, hallelujah, about time. I know it's probably cost them an extra 20 pence, but definitely well worth the extra. Okay, in the bag, in the bag, which is all molded in together. So, we have Airfix's standard type of styrene they're using at the moment, which isn't bad and does show up very, very well. So actually what you've got here, we just drop this top can down again. As you can see, you've got some very nice recessed detailing, which now we've come to expect from them. Beautifully done. But the only thing is, you can probably see it here, everything on these flexes. The plastic itself absolutely flexes and can cause problems with fit issues and stuff like that. Generally, looking down through the parts, we've got no real sign of flash on any of these. It's very nicely done. And generally, just having a look-see down, we just move slowly down here. As you can see, it's all beautifully done. There's nice details. Little things I do like is things like on these wheels. You've actually got a very nice braking system molded into it, which is a nice touch. Uh, and just generally the wheels with the actual the bolts and the various bits and pieces holding them together is a nice touch. But all of this recessed uh, panel lining, as they catch them in the light, you can see, very nicely done. And just down here, the spine work with the vents and stuff like that, again, it's very nicely done. Do like it. On the flip side, Everything's tidied up these days, which is a nice touch. All the ejector pins are recessed. None of them are sticking out. There's no real flash or any problems with any of those molds. The inner ones, even for these two-part uh, tailplanes, very nicely molded. Uh, I think that's the rudder on that one as well. 
Uh, so very nice touch with that. No problem with any of those parts. Okay, so we've actually got the fuselage. You can say it's a little bit flimsy the way they've done it with actually having this section cut out of it. But generally, as you can see, very nicely done. I can't see any problems. There's no flash, no bits. You've got the aerials are on it as well. A lot of this going in there. You can probably see here on these instrument panels, very nicely done. As I say, it's just surface texture, but for the scale, I think you're going to get away with it. Okay, and then this is some of those details that you're actually going to find on the inside uh, under the bonnet. This were those seats we were talking about. Um, as you can probably see, we've got these top ones which are molded with a little depression in there to fit your pilot, or you've got your harnesses showing through, no problem at all. Pitot tube, nice touch, nice and sharp. The gear, generally, everything looking really nice on this one, no problem with it at all. Uh, as you can see on the flip side, on the inside, we've got some very nice internal details which is a lovely little touch on such a small kit. So yeah, I have to say, we are impressed, but, okay, there's always a but, and I think I just found it. Unless I am mistaken, and there is something different with the front and rear ejector seats, I've got a mismold. I've actually got, if you can see this, the box head, and what you can see on which camera, um, but I'm missing one on one side. I assume it should be both and looking at it It looks like it's been caught when it got removed from the mold because there's an ejection bit Mark in the middle so it looks like unless I deliberately shouldn't have one But it definitely looks like a short shot on my kit for that seat, which isn't a problem. Okay It's a pain because you'd have to make a new one But a little bit of plastic card in there, you know a little bit of 0.5 plastic card jobs done Okay so what else we got? Okay, next one up, we'll start um, here. So as you see, we've got all the flaps and slats and all the rest of it. Some great details in this kit though. Certainly these wheel wells, you can see all the, the details down in there. They are absolutely exquisite the way they've done that. Some very nice details and something so small. This is for underneath the hood. This is the actual electronic stuff uh, underneath the nose. You can see the actual molded in marks and things like that. Things going down here for the flaps and the ailerons. A couple of ejector pin marks, a bit of a pain inside the actual intakes, but nothing massive. Got some little wiring looms for the rear of the main gear wells. Okay, the pilot figure, who unfortunately doesn't look like the guy in the picture. Does this mean we can do him that for trade description though? <laughs> anyway, we've got down here, as you can see, the cockpit tub, which is another little gem. Sorry, I'm about to sneeze. Okay. <coughs> it's okay, we're ready to that out. No one will know. Okay, so as you can see, control columns, we've got throttles in there, um, some nice little boxes, lumps and bumps that will really bring that to life. You've actually got here, this is the pods for the fuel uh, that go in there, the inside of those intakes, again, very, very nice indeed. So last up, we've got the actual clear parts. And again, nice little touch. I didn't see any instructions, you probably did watching, but you can probably see we get two canopies. So we've got closed or open, again, nice touch. The main difference is you think like, why, what's the difference? The difference is this one has got all the mechanics on the back molded in, this guy doesn't. So it's a straightforward flush push in. The other great thing about it, thinking ahead here guys, when you do crack your canopy, misscribe it or get a scratch in it or fogs up or whatever, you can always take that bit off, stick the bit on the front and you've got a spare canopy. Perfect, okay? If only everyone did this. That way all those can cracked canopies laying around everyone's spare boxes, we could find a home for them. But generally, they're a little bit thick, but they are clear. How well you guys can see that. If I put my little thing in there, I think that's pretty good. I've got no problem with any of those clear parts at all. So there we go. That is the Fallon Gannett T1, as I say, or Nat Gannett, what I'm on about. Sorry, it's all the G. Can't spell, read, and write anything. Okay, so there we go. That's the Nat T1. Beautiful kit, been waiting for it for a long time, and it's finally here. Apart from I've got a small mismold, that is a gem of a kit. So there we go, absolutely beautiful kit, and it is the recommended retail, it's only 17 pounds, so you think real world, it's only gonna be a sort of 15 quid kit. It's one of those things, Airfix have done it again, it's a complete bargain. Um, not a too well-known aircraft around the world, perhaps, uh, but it's safe, used in hot shots. Good film. Okay, so there we go. So next up, we've got something a little bit more um, historical, shall we say. So we have the Blenheim Bomber.
Okay, kit review time. Today, we've actually got the classic airframe. This is the Bristol Blenheim Mark I or Mark One F. Certainly a different kit, this one. It says on the front here, available only from Hannans. Hannans are one of the big distributors here in the UK, so I don't know quite where you'd get it anywhere else, uh, apart from them. Funnily enough, this did, kit did come from them in the first place. As you can see, beautiful box art on the front, quick run round. So we've got, you know, kit containing small parts, 148 scale, made in the Czech Republic, as all the, the classic stuff is. And your kit number is kit number 4155. Okay, just like that. There's a beautiful box art on this one. Really do love this one. Okay, we're no strangers um, to classic airframes. They've built some of the quite legendary kits over the years. As you can see, beautiful box art. This is the very early Blenheim. All right, so in here we have our standard type of thing. Now, with all the classic airframe stuff, you, you treat them like a limited run kit, okay? Because technically that's what they are. They're not making thousands of kits and usual ways of doing it. So some of the parts can be quite clunky. Reviews other people's like uh, Pacific Coast models do them as well. Um, and you sort of forgive some of the, the clunkiness, shall we say, uh, for some more of the extra bits you get. And this is the part we're talking about because just down in here, it's all in one giant bag, which I don't particularly like to see, but okay. In here, as you can see, you've got a lot of parts, uh, a lot of photo etch. You've got other photo etch bits here. Um, sorry, don't about photo etch, but certainly resin parts and all the rest of it. This is where you get away from thinking, wow, it's quite a clunky kit because you've got a lot of detail, which is all going to be your sort of aftermarket parts, which we'll look at very, very shortly. Let me just move that over there. So, starting off in the old instruction booklet, as you can imagine, again, it might look a little bit crude if you've never seen any of their kits before, but it does do everything you need. So usual thing, we've got the parts call outs, uh, all the bits in here. Some of the parts aren't gonna be used. Obviously you've got crosses through them for other variants that are coming out, but it will talk you through about, you know, obviously drilling out holes, what needs to be changed, where you're gonna have the actual uh, resin parts and things like that going in there, okay? So as you can imagine, there isn't much to it going on the, on the inside uh, for the main fuselage, but then you've got the front section going on and then the glass bits going in. Two halves of glass, we'll see exactly how nice and clear those are. Then we've got the turret going in at the top, okay, and then obviously positioning those in, putting them to the front. As you can see, not too much, but when you take into account here, you've got a resin engine in here to take place, and you've got to put in all the exhaust stacks and everything else like that. It is going to be a little bit complex. Okay, the gear going through, as you can imagine, again, small and fiddly, I think we'll be calling this one. Okay, um, down here on step 11, pretty straightforward. You've got those wheel wells going in, and then you've got the actual system of the two halves of the wings going together. Uh, it does say here, note, align the rear bulkhead of the wheels with the rear opening of the bottom of the wings. Pay special attention to aligning the wheel well uh, so that the landing gear mounts are parallel with the inboard lower wing surface, i.e. make sure it's seated correctly once it's in there, okay? Then it's just a kit, simple case of the old engine nauticals which we've already put, put in the front. Tailplane's going on. Uh, the gear going together and everything else. So as you said, we've got resin and bits in there to have a look at. Some more of this smaller little detail. So we've got little lumps and bumps, engine scoops, things like that, uh, which are gonna be going in, which are made of resin. So we're assuming the detail is a little bit better. We've got what Blenheim's quite famous for is the, the way that the wheel um, doors, uh, wheel well doors covers are actually attached to the front gear and sort of hang through it as well. Very reminiscent modern day A10. Uh, and then those are going on, the exhaust stack's going through. Um, tail on and then you've got mounting of the 303 guns and then you've got the guns for the belly uh, which you obviously this is the fighter version versus the uh, light bomber version uh, and then obviously the guns going in at the top not a lot to it on the old instructions especially when you realize how much resin you have got we've got a color call out here for the parts so it's your standard sort of you know ref night color uh, which is the dark earth dark green and with a black underside not blue because it looks blue in this uh, and everything else and then the same on the other side for the various markings you've got there the decals themselves whilst we're here if we can get them out without destroying it because thanks to our rob this is his kit who we're kindly allowed us to review for us Okay, decals actually beautifully painted. Good solid color. I don't know if the color's correct. I don't know. I thought it'd be, it, it looks more brown than red. Um, as I say, different cameras, different angles. Try on the other camera. 
um, as you can see, but it's solid. It's properly silkscreen printed. It's not like a printer which has got little lines running through it. It looks very nice. Good solid color on all of those, so no problem at all. And quite closely cut as well for the actual markings, so it's nice. But no uh, actual tracing paper to protect them or soak up any moisture. A little bit odd, so what I will do is I will save everything and we'll get that sealed down before we go. Okay, so moving into the parts, we'll leave the resin and the clear parts to afterwards. So let's just start down in here. Immediately you look at it, you can probably see the shininess of this, especially up here. Um, yes, it is literally that shininess, but what you have got is very fine recessed panel lining. In fact, so fine, it's almost too fine because I think you wouldn't be hard to get rid of that to actually sand and paint over it. All right, but generally as you can see, you've got a little bit of flash. Yeah, we'll get rid of the nasties first. First of all, because it's a limited run kit or a short run kit, you're not gonna get locating tabs, things like that for putting it together. Sometimes that's not a bad thing because occasionally they don't line up anyway and it makes fitting harder than it would be as if you just had a blank canvas. So certainly you can put your own little tabs in to make things line up a lot easier, but you haven't got any of those. Generally, it's not too bad at all, but sometimes they can be a little bit rough on the inside. You've got a little bit of flash on this guy just down on here. You might want to remove that one first and this one so you get a nice meat as they go together. But generally, as you can see, you've got some nice ribbing details showing through here on the tail. Uh, making your way through and hopefully you can see different details pop out but as I said the engraving is very very fine okay I don't think there's anything problem with that but again you know you're probably looking down here and you can see you know there isn't a slot though there isn't they just butt in so sometimes it can be make aligning the wings a little bit tricky but again it's part of the course for these types of kits okay so you've actually got here we've got the tops of the wings here again you can see this detail which is very very fine it's very nice no problem with any of this okay a little bit of flash on it but as i said we we accept all of those things all right but generally not too bad at all it's just when you run your finger over some of them feel raised some of them feel recessed like this front one here actually i think is raised but the back half recessed not too sure about that uh, but generally very very nice i don't know how well the camera can pick out some of the details I'm using the other monitor at the moment, but hopefully you can see nice details going on all that. The HO engine themselves, quite nice. Again, a little bit flashy. Um, there's a little mold marks running through them as well. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to take care of that. I think it's gonna stand out. Just a little bit of flash, usual things, but not too bad on the inside. Again, you wanna clear off these ejector pin marks, things like that to make sure we're all good. But, um, the crudeness you can sort of be forgiven in a moment so don't read too much into the flash and being horrible that's why i'm not going to knock this kit because it is a limited run kit okay you can probably see or i don't know how well you can actually see you might see there's like a dried residue as well all over these surfaces this is one of those things um i had a gentleman email me the other day and he said i noticed you never wash any of your kits i think modern day kits you don't need to it's not like the old days where you'd have literally in the bag you would see this one hasn't got it, but you'd actually get residue in the bottom of the bag. That's from where the mold is sprayed um, and then obviously the injection to make them come out the mold easier. This is what this has got on it and you can actually see it and it's dried onto the wing. So the chances are this is one of those kits. As we were saying, modern kits, you don't really have to. It's very rare you see it. This one I would, this wing's even worse, um, but you can probably see it down there. You get that sort of residue there's like a line of it. I think if you try to paint over that, it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare, it's gonna react. Generally, all of these smaller parts, as you can see, all a little bit flashy in that, but again, we'll forgive that because the next bits are really, really good. So, after you've looked at your kit and you thought, really, I've just paid X amount for it, is, you know, what you get? This is what you get. This is all the resin stuff. Now, the only thing I hate about it is the way it's all chucked into one bag. So you've got, mm, bits knocking against bits. So never throw away the bag, never throw away any small parts you've got. This is what it's all about at the end of the day. This here, as you can probably see, what I'll do is I'm just gonna drop the cameras in, both of them just a little bit. So down here, as you can probably see, we've got some very nice detail on these areas, just like this, okay? Really, really nice stuff, okay? Very thinly molded. In fact, you could, if I hold this up to the light, I can see straight through it, it's that thin, okay? But this is what we're talking about here. So good detail for the cockpit walls. 
We've got the instrument panel just down here. Again, some very nice detail on that. And looking around, you've got the actual bezels at the back as well from the instruments hanging through. So you could, a little bit of wiring on there. The seat, very nicely done. So we've got molded harnesses um, and you've got molded the actual seat cushion as well. Looks like it's been used. It's actually dented in all of this, which is a very nice touch. Sorry about the nail color there. You can tell I was painting yesterday. <coughs> And then what you've actually got here is, uh, this thing is the rear bulkhead. I don't think you're gonna have to take that plug out because you're not gonna see it, but I'm pretty sure the seat goes against this. Um, and it's just gonna be like that. But again, you've got nice, you can actually see, uh, hopefully you can see, you've got the details of the riveting each side of these sprues. So very nicely done. The engines themselves, as you can see, again, a little bit flashy. You know, you might wanna get in there with a very sharp knife and just trim those up. But again, the level of detail, is very very good on these it's not a you know a sort of shake and bake chuck it together they have been thought about it. so we've got two of those uh, the wells take that out as we can see we've got fully detailed wells with all the framing this is what they were talking about making sure you line up properly otherwise you're gonna have problems fitting them in but again it's so thin I can see daylight through the bottom of them in fact if you hold them up to the light you can see all transparencies it's very very thin Okay, you can actually see it's come through slightly, got little holes just there, it's that fine a detail. So you've got two of those. Okay, this is the um, uh, the actual belly gun plate for the four guns that go where the bomb bay would be. Now you're going to have to probably trim up all of this block underneath and sand it down. Just remember your health and safety. A couple of little, uh, you know, hot details on the side here. So you've got some little bits, they're very crudely done. You might want to improve on those just a little bit, but generally it's not bad. We've got here one, I'm hoping there's another one. <clears throat> Sorry Matt, I can only find one. There might be another one in a minute, but um, I'm assuming this is the actual prop uh, front as well, okay. No, it can't be. Surely there must be another one in here. It's either that or one missing. Oh, sorry, different color resin. That's why I didn't see it. So this is your actual, uh, the spinners, if you like, for the props attaching. Two coolers. Uh, one for each engine, again, nice touch there. And we've got some more little details. Uh, sometimes you can look at one, and this one here is not as nicely done as this one. Uh, but, you know, again, pretty good stuff. That's all very nice. Down in here as well, I'm not gonna bother getting these out because you can see them quite clearly. But this is the exhausts coming off the engines in resin. Okay, we won't get them out, very delicate. I presume it's part of the undercarriage just down there. All right, so I'm even going to put the flashy bits in because hell, you never know. So we're just going to pop these in here. But what I'd like to see is them against a piece of foam to stop them knocking around. Luckily, these ones, all these parts aren't too bad, but sometimes they can take a hit. Especially when you get large lumps like these in there. All right, just because I want to keep this safe. Checking the mat as well to make sure we've got nothing left over. All right, then we've got the next bag which I think this is undercarriage things, guns, more exhausts. So down here you can see this is a lot more of this finer detail. So we've got some formers there. Uh, looks like we've got uh, magazines for the guns and the drum. Okay, for the actual, the different types of guns. Okay, and again, seating. We've actually got the guns themselves, I do believe these are, or part of the undercarriage. Uh, another part just down there. As you can see, very nicely done. Exhausts, we saw those a moment ago. We've got the actual guns themselves, which I think you might want to run along for some, perhaps some aftermarket metal ones might work better in there, but they're okay. Okay, seats, uh, for the actual seating system, the way it fits into the framework, everything else like that, again, nicely done. Okay, and then some more smaller parts, again, ridiculously thin some of them you can see straight through them I know the camera doesn't pick it up exactly well that's a mirror some more little formers down like that as you can see very nicely done okay there's your browning 50 cal it's a little bit bent but it's not too bad I've seen a lot worse okay right the way down to there I think we've got rudder pedals you've got the control yoke uh, and some more looks like a little table down in there as well so that's very nice um, and you've got another gun here as well, which is 
beautifully done very very fine I say this is what we're talking about here these small broken parts I assume that's a bit of something so we'll keep that over there I haven't seen anything broken off but you never know okay and there's another little bit of former as well just down in there so I'll just slide them out of the way a moment <clears throat> last up we've got the clear parts okay so tend to be a little bit hit me so they're either very very good or they're awful and this is one of those where initially I looked at it and thought it's awful but what it is you actually got these parts here quite cloudy the actual bits that count the windows are actually very very clear because it's all on an angle you can't really see but if I place my finger in there as you can see we don't have a lot of distortion for these windows when you're actually in the window area itself so I don't think that's too much of a problem and I think it will really will make a nice kit. The um, dorsal turret as well doesn't look too bad. A little bit different, but obviously because of the thickness and the way it's moulded, um, it makes it a little bit tricky. So there we go. That is the classic airframe uh, Bristol Blenheim. As I said, don't get excited over the kit because you never do. What you do get excited about, though, is the level of detail that you add to that actual part. And let's face it, I think the detail is in the right parts. By actually having them in you know obviously taking the time it's quite a lot of glass at the front you know um so you can do a lot of work in that some detail there you've got the engines there's quite big openings on the front of these engines so again it's nice to spend a little bit of time there so really you're not worried about the other areas too much anyway so as i said great kit a little bit flashy probably not for the beginner if you're not haven't done resin work before especially and you're not too up on you know your kits at the moment you might want to steer clear of this one to be honest if your skills are up there and you're up for a challenge then it's definitely a great kit to go so there we go that's the blending bomber i don't actually have the kit because it wasn't my kit it was um uh, matt's kit um who lent it to me for the review and has now got it back plus fact he got a load of goodies for it as well so it really will be very very nice and say so if you haven't built classic airframe stuff before you might want to, um, if you're new to the hobby, have a think about it first or get hold of the kit and have a play. Because I say, <clears throat> the kit itself, when you look at it, you think, oh, okay, but that aftermarket stuff is absolutely beautiful and it will turn into a magical bomber. Uh, really, really nice. So well worth getting that one as well. Okay, a couple of things we've got to mention. Um, first of all, tidying up your, um, in the forum, your threads, your bits and pieces, uh, your old banners, things like that. Uh, we need to get those sorted out, guys, for the end of the year. Otherwise, the um, forum police, i.e. Hans and Steve, will be round after you. Um, and they'll be just be changing them for you. But it will save them a massive job because it is a huge job to go around and change everybody's over. So if you can make sure that you've got any out of date photos with bad links, if you've got any old banners that obviously been turned off now, things like that for the old group builds and SIGs, that you get them taken off with your signatures and everything else. The other sort of thing as well, guys, signatures is for a signature. It's not for you to put your entire stash list in it because some of you are starting to put them in and they're getting a bit big. Uh, we try and keep it as small and concise as possible through the app, the entire of the forum. So if you can make sure that you keep it to a minimum um, you know we've got different areas for things like that about what's in your stash and, your, and things like that so it's just a thing keeping a bit shorter and everything else but you say if you can tidy up any old banners things like that if you finished um, things for for sale in the for sale and things like area just drop one of the, the actual staff uh, a PM uh, and we'll get it removed for you we do go around and tidy them up and remove them out over time but certainly you know that is a thing to that the other thing as well I've got to mention guys when you're joining the forum it has to be your real name no nicknames because what happens is it just chucks you in a bucket for me to deal when I get 10 minutes okay and some days it does take me a day or two to get to it then I have to go along and if you are a member I have to then transfer your name um, and re-update the system and do it like that and it does take me a few minutes to do each one so when you've got a pile of them sat there it's one of those things it's like oh god you know but if you can literally do five minutes to do that also if you're doing your name you can put a space in okay so like if you're like Philip Flory you can do Phil Flory and it will still be fine. So you can put a space in, because we know on the main site, you can't put any spaces in your username. The forum will allow a space. So my um, site name for the main site login to watch the videos and all the things like that is Phil Flory, all one word, okay? But from the forum point of view, you can put a space in. So capital P, you know, for Phil, space, capital F, Flory, okay? And you can do it that way. The system will recognize you. Um, it's smarter, quite frankly, than the actual main site one. 
Um, so if you can put those in, it would absolutely be fine. But remember, if you are signing up to Flory Models, and let's face it, we've had a massive influx of your people recently, hundreds and hundreds over the last couple of months alone. Um, just remember to actually use your real name. We don't do nicknames. We are human here, and it does make things a hell of a lot easier on the forum if you're using your real name than using nicknames and everything else like that. Okay, so, you know, we are human. We are normal people. We are just modelers. So we don't need to hide behind silly names, all right? So on that note, the prize draw. Okay, um, as you say, last month's prize draw uh, finished last week, obviously being uh, the end of November. So the winning was picked out by the random number generator before we came on air was number 130, which is Brandon Krogstand. Krogstand, is it? Sorry, if it's Krogstad. That's it, Krogstad. That'll be the one. Sorry if I've mutilated your name. I'm useless at it. Ask Sid. Okay, and everything else like that. So don't forget, we've got uh, this month's um, one is a little bit special because you've got a few goodies on that. So let's have a quick look. Hello, Merry Christmas, and welcome to Flory Models December Prize Draw. We always try and do something a little bit special, being Christmas and everything else. So we're just going to up the ante and make it bigger and better. So instead of a year's free subscription here to Flory Models, you're actually going to get a lifetime subscription to Flory Models. So you're going to be an LTM member. You're also going to get, as we always give away, full set of the Flory Model sanders, all 10 in there. Plus you're gonna get a mouse mat, the poster, the black Flory Models badge, the pen, mug, sticker sets, polo shirt as well, okay? So a great prize for Christmas. All you gotta to do to enter is obviously, first of all, you have gotta be a member. So sorry, non-members, you can't enter in this. You're gonna to have to be in the forum, so you can have to be a forum member as well. So it's well worth being in there anyway, as you all know. At the top, we've got the prize draw area just underneath the announcement section. It's always the one at the top, so click in there. It'll go to the one at the top because it'll be pinned. And all you've got to do is pop in there, something along the lines of Merry Christmas uh, or, you know, count me in, the usual bits and pieces. And then what happened is midday UK time, as in GMT Zulu, um, what I'll do is on the 31st of December, uh, I will close the draw around about then. And then I might even try and do it live, depending how it is. But certainly around that time, on the 1st, I will actually announce the winner uh, in a special little bulletin, a little bit like this one on there. So really worth getting in there, get your name down, get entering uh, and try and win this great prize. So on behalf of myself, the sales team, Mel and all the rest of the team, we would like to wish you a happy Christmas. Okay, so there we go, that's the prize draw. Um, something a little bit different being LTM being offered in that one or a lifetime membership. Um, and there'll be a few more goodies probably added to it as we make our way through the month uh, before Christmas. So well worth getting your name down. Remember, members only can enter that one, so just pop your name down, Merry Christmas, count me in, usual things. Uh, it's just below the announcement area on the forum at the top of the forum, so you can get in there and get your name on that one and a chance to win all those great prizes. Speaking of things like that, we are doing the sort of 12 days of Christmas-ish. Every couple of days I'm going to be putting up um, via the Facebook page and it'll be on the YouTube, it'll come up uh, and that'll be a free for non-members to watch certain videos that we've done over the last eight years now here on uh, Flory Model. So uh, every now and again there'll be one up. To be honest, uh, yesterday I put up the live show from Tuesday because I thought it was quite a good one. So it's a three hour live show, usual fun and jollocks that go on uh, on a Tuesday night with me and the guys. So if you want to watch that one, that one will stay up until, well, actually tonight when you see this one. And then on Saturday, there'll be a video from one of the builds. One of the recent builds is going to go up. So there'll be a part of one of those. Okay, so I'm not saying which one it is yet. But then over the next, every couple of days, I will literally put up a new one and the old one will be removed. So if you want to see what we get up to in a little bit more depth here on Flory Models, then obviously you can have a look there. Okay, so that's about it for this week. Um, as I say, plenty of things to go on with. I've got to get going. I'm going to have a lot of fun moving on with that one a lot of fun painting this thing i'll be dusting the studio for a week to get rid of it as i say next week's show is going to be a sort of special on uh new metal finishes so that's what we're going to have about we're going to be talking about metal finishes uh, and reviewing something a little bit special that has a metal finish as well which will be quite interesting and everything else like that so until next week everybody happy modeling and take care <laughs>